Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. President Mohamedou Buhari calls for peace as he celebrates Eid El Kabil amid cheers at its country home in Dara, Pastina State. The message of national unity resonates as Nigerians today join Muslim faithful across the world to commemorate the annual festival. From Mecca to Jerusalem, Muslims the world over preach a message of peace while others perform final rites of the annual Hajj pilgrimage. Kenya's Supreme Court nullifies the election of sitting President Uru Kenyatta, orders fresh elections within 60 days. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website. It's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channel TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. And talking about pictures, here are some of them you sent into our eyewitness portal. Let's begin with this one from the federal capital territory of Buja, showing the terrible state of a road in Jahim Kapi area. Our eyewitness reporter says it's been a major headache for commuters who fly it. And this next shot is another bad road from Ganawuri Axis in Plateau State. Our eyewitness reporter explains that it's a link road from Kaduna and it needs to be fixed urgently. From roads we move to env environmental issues now with this image showing the dirty conditions of the Gombole Road in Medugri area of Bronu State. Our eyewitness reporter is worried about the health implications this can have on residents. And our final picture is from Uwiri, the Imo state capital, showing the dilapidated state of a community secondary school in Ikeduru. Our eyewitness reporter claims the school is owned by a Catholic church and wants them to do something about it. Thank you so much for sending in those images and we do encourage you to keep them coming. To discuss more on how to strengthen Nigeria's unity through religious harmony, I'm being joined on the news at 10 by the National President of the Muslim Congress of Nigeria, Dr. Lukman Abdurrahim, and the Senior Pastor Living Waters Unlimited Church, Pastor Ladi Thompson. Thank you both for joining us on the news at 10. It's a pleasure. I'll say, I'll say happy yeah. salah to you, Thank you Dr. Very much. Abdul Rahim. Yeah. Now, let's begin with you, Dr. Abdul Rahim. Nigeria is considered a federation with multiple voices, everyone asking for different things. So why do you think this is the case? Um, first and foremost, uh, after independence, we, uh, we lived peacefully and we had visionary leaders with uh, tall dreams and aspiration and they put in the foundation Unfortunately, along the line, there was a problem. So instead of the various ethnic groupings to see themselves as one, the issue of tribalism actually reared its ugly head, and the political class actually also degenerated. Instead of policies of issues, policies of development, people started fighting for their personal pockets. Eventually, the people became hopeless, hapless, angry, and they actually attributed the problem to religion, ethnic groups, and what have you. So in the recent times, uh, various ethnic groups want to go back to their respective region because those who are supposed to give directions, they have not actually done that. And um, unfortunately, that is the situation we have found ourselves. Pastor Thompson, you yeah. share the same view. Well, with the little twist to it, and uh, this is where I would like to bring in some uh, accurate, accurate uh, historicity, so to speak. In 1968, uh, Obafemi Awolo made a comment and said, it is not debatable that the British created Nigeria and that they handed it whole at independence. 
but the contraption they handed over had within it forces that could make it disintegrate. Now, what Obafemi Awolowo was talking about there, the centrifugal forces, is what we describe as failure engineering. Dr. Unam Diaziku said the same thing, and I think the most important of all is that Sir Abubakar Tafawalewa on the 7th of October in 1960 at the General Assembly of the UN in New York made a speech, and within his speech, he acknowledged that a lot of confusions, intractable problems, he called it, had been engineered into Nigeria's foundation. And he gave a clue as to how it would be resolved. He knew, and they all knew, that there would be problems along the way. So the simple truth is this. Failure engineering is not easy to solve. So whatever you see going on today all over Nigeria, for the engineers who engineered the nation, whether it's the divide and rule, the religious divides, the tribal divides, believe you me, most of those things are engineered and they can be resolved. But is there a threat to these agitations? Is there a threat to? To these agitations, these voices. Yes. All these voices, this is it. When the people reach a point where they don't see a future and they don't see a, a dynamic vision that can help all of them to live together, what normally happens to the human being, uh, I think they describe it as TMI, transmarginal inhibition, is that when that overwhelming stress comes, people shut down. Now, instead of looking forward to a future, everybody is looking to the past for the future, which doesn't work. Doesn't work at all, does it? But Dr. Abdul Rahim, yeah. do you think the state of the economy has something to do with this? Are, they, are people frustrated? Of course, in the, the development literature, when people are hopeless and hapless, of course, uh, it leads to agitation. For instance, look at the number of unemployment, un unemployed youth we have in southeast, southwest, northeast, north central. Unemployment actually led to Boko Haram, and the, the frustrated youth in the southeast were easily mobilized for IPOB agenda. See that the intellectuals in the southeast they are not actually at the forefront of that particular agitation. But the youths who are unemployed, who have nothing doing, they are the ones who are actually leading that particular agitation. Ditto for Southwest, the Bado in the Korodu, the kidnappers and so on and so forth. Those who constitute majority of these particular criminals are the youths who are unemployed. So I think economy has a lot to do with the current agitation and frustration we are seeing in Nigeria. And what do you think, Pastor Conte? Yeah. Well, my learned colleague will allow me to flip it around a little bit, yeah. because what he has said is in consonance with a lot of uh, the Western literature coming into Nigeria. Yeah. However, I'd like to say this. Whatever was engineered into us had it such that in southern Nigeria, long after the colonials have gone, we continue to drink tea, munch biscuits, wear suits, wigs, stockings, in tropical heat. Now, everything we're doing is a program, and as long as we do that, there's no way we'll be able to feed ourselves. From the northern end of the country, people dress like Arabs, speak like Arabs, do everything like Arabs, and what you don't realize is that as long as we continue to do that, we have sort of shut down an indigenous economy. Take for, let me take something simple, for instance. Look at hair care products. If we had an, an Afrocentric or a Nigerian rooted uh, base for hair care products, do you know how much revenue it generates every year? Actually, I think what we need to do is to look at the financial implications of failure engineering. An Arab philosopher, Ibn Khaldun, said a people who have been conquered are fond of imitating the dress code of those who conquered them. They try to speak their language. They try to find validation in behaving like those who conquered them. So what's happening to us in Nigeria is that we have a black race, a black nation, who have a conquered spirit. Northern Nigeria, southern Nigeria, and that, of course, has affected the way we do business, the way we do religion, and the way we do practically everything which has undermined our ability to have an economy that is viable. We can feed ourselves. All the clothes we wear are mostly imported. The shoes, 
mostly imported. The cars we drive, mostly imported. The phones we use, mostly imported. Excuse me, where's the economy going to come from? And I guess that's why the federal government is doing so many things so that they, to make people more attracted to locally made products. But let's move it forward now. How do we achieve peace and unity in this country across religious divides, political divides? Uh, first and foremost, I think religious leaders, especially Muslim and Christians, need to work together and they should send good signals to the congregants out there. If you look at um, religious leaders in this part of the country, we seem to be competing over nothing. If you understand the content of um, the Quran, our business is to save souls, to let people recognize God and to be able to live peacefully with themselves. It's very clear in Quran chapter 2, verse 256, that there shouldn't be compulsion in matter of faith, and that everybody has rights over his religion. And we shouldn't judge for God. God is the judge. But in this part of the world, we put ourselves in a position of judge. We condemn, and then the poor pills, instead of winning souls, we dish out eight speeches. And our actions and inactions are imitated by the congregants. So they go out there, fight themselves, and they cause mayhem in the society. So I think, as religious leaders, we must be responsible in whatever we say, whatever we do, and there must be a platform for religious leaders to interact so that we know more about our religions, Christianity and Islam. When the general people, when they see some of these things being done rightly, then they will do the needful. Yeah. Something. What do you think? Well, I think he's uh, pretty much has said a lot of things that I agree with. But what I will try to add again is the fact that I think if you go and look at the colonial papers, 1956 or so, something called the Mangin Papers, you'll find out that even the religious divide is something that was generated. And if we're going to resolve this thing at all, first of all, we need to realize it's not a Nigerian problem, it's a global problem. And if we want to solve it, I believe that the greatest thing we need to do is to first of all gain confidence in ourselves as Africans. Why do I say so? The so Bible says that wisdom is justified of our fruits. There is an example within Nigeria that can solve global problems when it comes to all these religious divisions. Now what's the example I'm talking about? We have something in common. The celebration going on today, the three Abrahamic faiths yeah. have a lot in common. Now, but the major thing we have in common is that we all believe in a creator. Uh, the Bible will tell you in Psalm 19, we'll repeat the same thing in, in uh, Romans 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 20, will tell you that the heavens declares the glory of God, the earth shows his handiwork. Day after day is saying something, but we're not listening. Night after night is showing forth knowledge, we're not listening. If we just take God only in his office as creator alone, and set that as a standard, you will find out that there will be no reason for us to fight one another, which is what the people of the Southwest in the Omoluabi code for more than 1400 years have been doing. There is an ethical code that's called the Omoluabi code in which they had refined the body of knowledge to the point that it was impossible and has been impossible to have religious wars in the Southwest for the simple reason that everybody is taught to accept God in his office as creator and all the things that come with it. Okay, thank you so much. The senior pastor, Living Waters Unlimited Church, Pastor Ladi Thompson, and the national president of the Muslim Congress of Nigeria, Dr. Lukman Abdurrahim. Many thanks for talking to us. And when the news at 10 returns, economist Bismarck Rewani asked the federal government to invest in Nigeria's labor productivity. That's some business news. Join us again.